All right, welcome back, everybody. We're going to do a quick one today. Um, once again, we're going to go off of uh, the Scap Attack channel. Um, and we're going to cover a topic that I think a lot of people have wrong, which is the Wizards Jordan years. Because um, if it wasn't for that injury, the guy was reaching like peak performance really, really fast. So um, I'm going to link uh, the video down below like I always do for the original vid video. But let's do a let's do a reaction to this. All right, guys, here we go. The goat, Michael Jordan. Yes, By sir. literally any metric used to evaluate basketball, Jordan clears any other player in NBA history. But as we move further and further away from his like actual statue. playing days, fewer and fewer people seem to truly remember his career. While virtually any perceived flaw in his resume is substantially illuminated <laughs> in a desperate and pathetic attempt to try to nullify his massive advantage against other players. Other players who have played significantly longer in more watered down eras to stack. Every time I see LeBron getting carried off, that this has nothing to do with LeBron. I always think of Paul Pierce when he crapped his pants <laughs> in the playoffs. Um, you know LeBron didn't crap himself, but it looks exactly the same hollow statistics and one of the biggest alleged weak points if you want to categorize it as such of jordan's career was how he played at nearly the age of 40. i'm a man i'm 40. as if that is an overwhelming or significant aspect used to evaluate a player's legacy and with the various memes and gifts and garbage hot takes it's garbage percolating around various social media platforms from various Gen Z know-nothings. Yeah, I, Scap's right on this. I, I argue with my brother all the time on this topic, which is interesting because we grew up watching MJ. And, you know, when we were in our 20s, we saw MJ with the Wizards. But just because they didn't win, like, he feels like MJ should have stayed retired. But I thought it was cool, MJ coming back to a scrub team. You know, like a bunch of nobodies. And just proving that he still has it. Because he played his ass off. You know? It was, uh, what, the uh, the second season that he was back coming off of two injuries, rib and knee. And the dude played every single game. I don't know any modern players that are healthy that, that, that do that, let alone an old man who had two injuries. Forget about it. Nerds! Nerds! Comparing Jordan Nerds. at the age of 38 to other players, it is time to dig into the context of just what Michael Jordan's first season with the Washington Wizards, his aged 38 season, actually looked like. The year was 2001-2000. Yeah, before he injured his knee, like, watch these stats. They'll, they'll blow you away. 2002, the LA Lakers were dominating the league as they would go on ultimately to win their third Baby consecutive Kobe. championship that summer behind Shaquille O'Neal and Kobe Bryant, who were both all NBA first team selections that season. Along with Bryant, various other elite perimeter players were ascending at that time. Y'all remember Orlando T Mac? God damn. I thought he was better than Kobe, straight up. I, I really. I was kind of a Kobe hater back and T-Mac was my boy. With Tracy McGrady joining Bryant on the first team that year, while Allen Iverson, who led the league in scoring that season, headlined the All-NBA's second team. But in the middle of it all, Michael Jordan decided to come out of retirement for a third time after a full three-season hiatus from the end. Wait, I think he has that wrong. That's not for a third time. Because he retired in 93, came back in 94, that's one. Retired in 98, and then he came back and then with the Wizards. So that he just, he came back twice. He retired three times, but he came back from retirement twice because he's still retired. Sorry, nerds. I'm a nerd. NBA, but he didn't go join his boy Phil Jackson to build a super team in LA and gravy train a seventh title. In fact, he didn't go build a super team anywhere. Jordan came out of retirement to join the Washington Wizards. What? 
<laughs> you know, I the know. Wizards. That's how we all felt. Who had the third worst record in the entire NBA the year before in right. the 2000-2001 season behind minority owner and president of basketball operations, Michael Jordan. All right, I'm not going to lie. MJ was a terrible GM. Like He, uh, the best basketball player of all time, but he is a terrible scout by far. Winning just 19 games that year with Richard Hamilton and Juwan Howard leading the team in scoring that season en route to a putrid 19 and 63 record. But the hate. Oh my, 19 and 63? That's what Jordan took over? Damn. His season did lead to the Wizards landing the top pick in the NBA draft that summer, using it to select the Washington Wizards select Kwame Brown. What? Yeah. I mean, no one is saying <laughs> is Jordan is GM. the goat of front office moves here. No. Nope, you see, no, Jordan not. wasn't trying to steal any cheap championships like what became the trendy thing to do in the 2010s. He was just, quite frankly, disgusted with the team he was now an owner of being a bunch of losers. Right. So when he decided to come out of retirement, not only did Jordan not crawl on his hands and knees to another superstar's team, he also didn't grovel and beg for another superstar to come join him on the Wizards. Washington would make... See, that's why I respected Jordan. Because you take him in his first uh, five years in the league, he had no help, and he played his ass off. And then you take him at the end of his career, and once again, he had no help. The guy played his fucking ass off. You know, didn't matter. No excuses. He didn't make excuses. He didn't whine. He didn't cry. He showed up to work and he busted ass. Make no other significant upgrades that offseason except adding the 38 year old goat out of the owner's box after a three year layoff. Oh, and also they traded away their leading scorer from the year before, Juwan Howard. Jordan would sign a $1 million contract and donate the entirety of it to 9 11 relief efforts. I didn't know that. Damn. He donated his, his entire paycheck. See, it wasn't about stacking any more championships, accumulating any hollow stats, and it wasn't about the money. It was about competition and teaching his assortment of young loser players how to compete and win. And when evaluating the Wizards' 37 and 45 year end record that season, it looks like a pretty unspectacular season. And when viewing Jordan's stat line that year of 23 points per game, six rebounds, and five assists, well, that also doesn't. See, he's Scap's going to co probably cover it, but even that alone, at his age, coming out of retirement, is impressive as all hell. But it really was better. It was better than that before he got injured. Look remarkable through the. <laughs> Once again. The guy was playing through injuries as long as he could. Not like the modern players, you know, where they never, they, they bruise a toe and they're going to miss two weeks. No, man, MJ was playing through some hard injuries. So, of course, his stats went down, but he showed up to work. Lens of the inflated scoring and stat stacking that happens in today's offensively incentivized era. But take a closer look. Jordan, unsurprisingly at his age, experienced significant issues with his knee throughout the season and ended up playing only 60 of a possible 82 games that year. But in the 60 games he played, the Wizards were 30 that. and 30. So Give a team that. that was only 19 and 63 the year before. That okay, so with Jordan, they were a 500 team. After what? What was it earlier? They won like 18 games the prior season? Not, not too shabby. It traded away their leading scorer, played 500 basketball for the three quarters of the year that Jordan actually played. Jordan, meanwhile, at the age of 38, led the Wizards in scoring, assists, and steals while he was third in rebounding on the team that season. 
and taking a closer look at the 22.9 points per game. Uh, yeah, that was actually good for ninth best in the entire NBA that season. An NBA where league-wide scoring per game that year was just 95 and a half points per game. For context, yeah, the average scoring... It's not like what it is now. Well, okay, yeah, what is it? 115 points per game? Yeah, big difference. So even even if you you put up 25, that's the equivalent of putting up like 30 nowadays. So take that as you will. We're all impressed with LeBron putting up 25 a game right now. And I am honestly impressed with LeBron because at his age, 25 is something to, to respect. But we disrespect MJ as an old man in a completely different league. You know, he basically was putting up 30 a game in modern, you know, the, the, the way the modern game is played. And just imagine when he was putting up like 37 a game, you might as well say the guy was putting up like 45 points a game nowadays, like unheard of. This season in the 2022-2023 season was 114.7, nearly 20 points per game more. And the ass Wizards team that year averaged only 92.8 points per game, meaning Jordan accounted God for damn. nearly 25% of the Wizards scoring. For context, that is roughly the same amount of total point percentage scored that Jason Tatum and Steph Curry accounted for this year right. while averaging 30 and 29 points. Yeah, there it is. I, right there. You might as well have put up 30. Per game, the duo was named to first and second team All-NBA. And while Jordan physically would regress even more the following season, he still became the oldest player in NBA history to average 20 points per game for an entire season. And he did it while playing in all 82 games. Yes, sir. All 82 games. That's a big one. I mean, y'all ever run a company? How you feel about the guy who uh, shows up to work every single day all year, never calls in once? That's, <laughs> that's MJ. Yes, in his aged 39 season, where he turned 40 halfway through the year, Michael Jordan managed to log all 82 games for the ninth time in his career. And in two other seasons, he played in 80 and 81 games. Also in this season, where he turned 40 in February, while playing 82 games on one leg, he averaged 37 minutes per game. Load man. 37 minutes? That God damn. Management be damn. <laughs> <laughs> and Jordan would add six rebounds and five assists per game to go along. All right. So that's the final year with, with all the injuries intact. 26 and three. Well, four, basically. Not great, but still. Consider that 25, you know? It's almost, yeah, yeah. That's not to be disrespected. I don't know why we disrespect him. Why? Because he's not putting up 30 a game? Because he's not 28 years old anymore? Like, we got to respect the old man. With his 20 point per game average in an NBA that had nightly averages of just 95.1 points per game. While calling Jordan's Wizards tenure an overwhelming success story, or claiming it added to his legacy as the easy slam dunk goat would maybe be a tad bit hyperbolic. But what Jordan achieved on the court during those two years is far from the punchline that many teenagers and liars in the mass media today portray it as. 100%. And it certainly doesn't invalidate Jordan's stranglehold on the mantle of GOAT, nor does it make other players' fabricated cases for that title any stronger. All right, guys, that's the video. Uh, once again, check out Scap Attack. Um, my channel is still a big so if you like the content, give me a like, give me a subscribe, uh, chat it out down below, debate it. I know this is a, a controversial topic, so go ahead and talk about it down below. I'll jump in on the comments too. Um, my take is, and I witnessed it firsthand, Jordan was still one of the top 10 players in the league. 
when he played for the Wizards. He just didn't have any help. But the guy went out. He he played every game. He busted ass. And nine, I mean, ninety percent of the games, he was the best player on the floor. You know. So all right, guys. Thanks for watching the video, and uh, we'll see you on the next one. Peace.